Hey there engineers, welcome to Civil Engineering Academy. We're looking at a problem from structural design, specifically reinforced concrete design. Problem reads like this, for a simple, simple span singly reinforced concrete beam with cross section, dimensions, loadings, and properties shown, what is most nearly the allowable distributed live load? And we are to assume the beam section needs to be tension controlled, which is a pretty common assumption for a reinforced concrete design. And again, what that means, if you'll recall from uh, your, your uh, reinforced concrete design theory, is that we're trying to create a situation here where the steel or the rebar yields in tension before the concrete crushes in compression. So uh, we're given a beam here. We've got a 30-foot span. We've got a superimposed dead load of 640 pounds per foot. We've got a superimposed live load, which we're trying to solve for. And of course, we'll have uh, the self weight of the beam given the section properties. We've got the beam at 12 inches wide, 24 inches deep. Our effective depth, or D, equals 22 inches. And the properties on this beam are listed here below. We've got concrete strength, or F prime, sub C of 4,000 psi, or F sub Y, or the strength of the steel. The yield strength of the steel is 60,000 psi. And then our area of steel for the rebar is five inches squared and that's uh, probably coming from uh, five number nine bars as we can see there and then we've got an array of possible answers so let's jump into this okay so we'll recall from our reinforced concrete design theory that we uh, model a section of reinforced uh, reinforced concrete member with kind of an idealized uh, stress distribution Sometimes it's called a Whitney stress block. And we'll draw a quick diagram of what that looks like here. It kind of is approximated. The stress distribution is really parabolic, but we simplify it with the shape of a block. And if you'll recall this distance, the depth of the block, we call A. And the magnitude of this stress distribution we approximate to be 0.85 of F prime C. We determined, uh, if you'll remember again from your uh, reinforced concrete design theory, that the distance A is going to equal the area of the steel times the strength of the steel, F sub Y, all divided by our 0.85 F prime sub C times B, which is the width of the beam. And then our tension portion of our section, which is handled by the rebar down here, represented by this, this vector right here, amounts to the strength of the steel, F sub Y, times the area of the steel. Okay, so that's kind of our idealized uh, equivalent rectangular compressive stress block, as, as it's called. This might be called a Whitney stress block sometimes. Okay, if you'll also recall, so we're looking for uh, the, uh, the most nearly the allowable distributed live load. And so this is going to induce moments into this beam. And so we're going to be analyzing uh, the moments. We're trying to keep the moments within check. So if you'll recall, if we uh, take our strength reduction factor and we times it by the nominal strength of the beam, we have to keep that greater than or equal to the ultimate strength of the beam. So this is the uh, LRFD um, strength design equation that, uh, that we need to adhere to as we solve for this. Let's, uh, let's go over here and using this for our basis and we know, uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and solve for the, the depth of that uh, stress block or the dimension A. So if we plug in, we say A equals AS, we know what uh, the area of the steel is. That was given to us, five inches squared times our strength of our steel, which we know is 60,000. We'll carry all the units here just so we can keep track of those. And then all this is going to be divided by 0 
times our F prime sub C, which we were given at 4,000 pounds per inch squared. And then let's extend this out a little bit. All this is going to be times by uh, 12 inches, right? Which is the width of our, our beam. And if we cancel out all those, those units, we're left with just inches. And we calculate that this equals 7.35 inches. So next, oh, we need to recall also that for, uh, for flexure, for a tension controlled section, which we, which we are producing here, our strength reduction factor, our phi, equals 0 0.9. That's something uh, you can look up in your your reference manual. So now we've got the depth of the, the stress block. We, uh, we know our phi factor. We know our underlying uh, equation here for uh, strength design that we need to work with. Uh, what's the next step? Well, let's... Um, Let's recall that for reinforced concrete design for a, a singly reinforced beam that our um, nominal moment equals phi times the area of our steel times the strength of our steel times the depth, the effective depth, or D, minus the depth of our stress block divided by two. So let's um, let's figure out what our uh, phi m sub n is. Okay, so we have all these numbers. We know what uh, strength reduction factor is. We know what our area of steel is. We know what our strength of steel is. Oops, get those units wrong. Let's correct those at 60,000 pounds per inches squared. And then all that's going to be times our effective depth, which is 22 inches, minus the depth of our block that we just calculated, 7.35 all divided by two, put a bracket on there, and we grind through that calculation, and we're gonna come up with a number in inch pounds. So that gives us 4,947,750 inch pounds and we need to work in pound feet so we're going to say that one foot divided by 12 inches if we times that quantity by that we're going to get 412,313 foot pounds okay so that gives us our nominal capacity of the beam okay so uh, now we got to get we got to get after the uh, ultimate moment and remember uh, for a simply uh, supported beam our max moment for a simply supported beam is just the distributed load times the length of the beam squared all divided by eight and uh, so we can get at the ultimate by saying that if we times by the load factor our self weight of the beam we're going to call that w s sub w times the length of the beam squared all divided by 8 plus uh, 1.2 times the distributed live load that we were given call that w sub d just to kind of show how we're going to calculate the ultimate moment here and then all that we have to add our distributed live load 
times our uh, our load factor for live load, which is 1.6, and this is what this is what we're solving for. Okay, so we've got the self weight of the beam. I think we can calculate that given our dimensions here. Uh, the distributed dead load W sub D was given, and W sub L, the distributed live load, is what we're after. So I think if we calculate the self weight, we'll have all of the uh, all everything we need to to solve for the distributed live load. And so let's look really quick at W sub S W. That's going to equal the cross section of this beam. So let's take First, let's take 12 inches, and we'll times that by, we've got to convert everything to feet, so one foot per 12 inches, and we're going to times that by the depth, which is 24 inches, and we'll times that by, again, one foot per 12 inches. We'll bracket that so inches cancel inches cancel and if you'll recall uh, ACI says that concrete weighs 150 pounds per cubic foot so if we times these two values by 150 let's see this this foot will cancel with two of these and so that leaves one so we're left with pounds per foot for units, we calculate that out, and I get 300 pounds per foot. Okay, so now I've got all the numbers I need to plug this in. We're going to set it equal to the nominal, right? Because our our strength equation uh, says that our nominal strength has to be greater than or equal to our ultimate moment strength. So we're going to set that equal. Uh, we're going to say we've got 412 313 foot pounds and um, just in the interest of being simpler here I'm not going to carry the units we know that we're we're working with foot pounds okay so we're going to say 412 313 equals 1.2 times we just calculated the self weight of the beam 300 times 30 squared all divided by 8 plus 1.2 times the distributed dead load which we were given at 640 times 30 squared all divided by 8 and then we're going to add on our live load term oops this is 30 squared all divided by 8 and so if we calculate those terms out, this first term turns out to be 40,500 plus the second dead load term turns out to be 86,400. And the live load term turns out to be 180 times the distributed live load okay so if we subtract 40,500 from 412,313 we subtract 86,000 we consolidate terms uh, divide by 180 and calculate that out we get a distributed live load of 1,585 pounds per foot okay so uh, let's see, yeah, that corresponds to answer D. So not too bad. Uh, we're able to figure out the live load. That might correspond to a, a beam of like a uh, size like this. Maybe it's a 50 pound uh, per square foot distributed live load, and that beams, you know, at 30 foot on center or something, and that that would be the the distributed live load that it would be carrying uh, on a floor or whatever this beam uh, might be holding up. So anyway, hopefully that helps you out, and we'll uh, see you on the next one.